Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance current affairs. So, today's session is very important. The reason being today we are going to discuss the Monetary Policy Committee report or the Monetary Policy Statement. So, we all know the static portion, what is a Monetary Policy Committee, why is it formed, why does it give its report. So, generally the Monetary Policy Committee sits every two months, that is they bring out the report bi-monthly. Right? So, it's a bi-monthly report wherein we have two statements. The first one is the monetary policy statement and the second one is the statement of development and regulatory policies. Under the first statement, that is the monetary policy statement, the monetary policy committee, you know, they talk about the inflation that is persisting in the economy, especially in the last one quarter. So, inflation be discussion hoti hai and based on the prices that are there in the economy right now, and with the objective of maintaining prices in the economy, with the objective of controlling this inflation or bringing the inflation in the band that was decided, 4 plus minus 2 ka band. So, these are the, you know, objectives of a monetary policy committee, ki inflation target karni hai, you know, there should be stability in the prices of the economy and keeping in mind the growth of the economy. Because generally what happens is when there is very high inflation in the economy, demand might fall down because of rise in prices. And if demand falls down, Eventually, production might also fall down. A lot of businesses might want to wind up their businesses because of lack of demand. So, just keep it like growth may impact. Hota hai. So, the uh, function of monetary policy is not just to target inflation, but also keep in mind the growth of the economy, right? There should not be a declining growth because of high inflation or even low inflation, right? So, targeting inflation, maintaining price stability in the economy, the liquidity in the economy, and at the same time, keeping in mind the growth of the economy. So, these are the functions of any monetary policy committee. Now, so in this monetary policy statement, uh, the monetary policy committee talks about policy rates. So, policy rates for discussion hoti hai. I hope itna sab logo ko pata hoga. These, these are the static topics that we're just discussing right now. Now, what has been the changes in the monetary policy uh, rates, right? Policy rates mein kya changes aai hai? That is the big news this time. Before that, I want to talk a little bit about the inflation that was persisting in the economy. So, inflation in the month of December fell down below the 6%, right? It was somewhere around 5.9%. In the month of January, it rose again to 6.5%. And in the month of February, it was around 6.4%. This is the CPI, that is Consumer Price Index Inflation that we are talking about because RBI targets this CPI inflation. So, this is the Consumer Price Index Inflation, 5.9% it was in the month of December 22. So, it was finally, uh, you know, visible ki up monetary policy ka jo band hai, the band of inflation that is 2 to 6%, the inflation is actually falling between that band. Now, but unfortunately, in the month of this, uh, January 23, the inflation rose to 6.5%, breaching the target of RBI. Again, it breached the target in the month of February. So, it was expected that this monetary policy uh, committee major statement aegi, this time also in the month of April, because Yes, so it was expected in the month of April, the Monetary Policy Committee statement will also increase its rate because of high inflation and the fact that inflation is still more than 6%, right? So that was the expectation key uh, policy rates increase honge, repo rate increase honge. However, the decision taken by this Monetary Policy Committee is that the inflation, uh, sorry, the repo rate will remain same. So the repo rate is unchanged to 6.5. 6.5% is the repo rate. In previous monetary policy statement, this was increased by 25 basis point, right? And this time it has remained unchanged to 6.5%, right? However, the governor said that we are still targeting inflation because inflation is still more than 6%. So the focus of the monetary policy committee will be to target inflation this entire year or this entire financial year. And with that he said that the rate remains unchanged to 6.5%. Now, some reasons jo hai, is rate ki change na hone ke. One of the main reasons is it's since last 11 months continuously RBI has been increasing its rate. So cumulatively RBI has increased its rate to 250 basis point. Cumulatively RBI has increased its rate to 260 basis point from the month of May 2022. May 22 se increase hi kara hai monetary policy rate. So finally it was time to keep the rate balance but keeping in mind or checking the inflation. 
So inflation has still been more than 6%. However, the repo rate remains unchanged at 6.5%, which is which means that in last monetary policy statement as well, February may year rate decide was a 6.5% and it will continue to be same 6.5%. Right? Along with that, it is also said that this stance will also be like the previous stance that is calibrated withdrawal, right? Withdrawal of what? Withdrawal of the accommodation. So accommodation jo pehle, um, kara tha during COVID or during the pandemic or even after the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, the RBI was focusing on accommodating stances or injecting liquidity in the economy. So uh, just like the last monetary policy statement, this monetary policy statement also targets withdrawal of that accommodation or calibrated withdrawal, right? With this, now what is what will be the SDF that is standing deposit facility? I hope you all know that we have discussed about standing deposit facility a lot of times. Let's just recapitulate it. So the LAF, that is the liquidity adjustment framework or the corridor stands like this. Repo in the middle, SDF and then we have MSF. MSF. MSF is for emergency fund when the interbank liquidity has dried so when banks have exhausted their interbank liquidity or their inter interbank credit limit then they uh, resort to the msf which is more than the repo rate right it's this 25 basis point more than the repo rate similarly sdf in sdf uh, there is no collateral it just works like reverse repo rate so it works like reverse repo rate wherein banks park their money with the RBI and RBI gives collateral. This happens in reverse repo rate. However, in SDF, banks can park money with the RBI, but they do not get any collateral in return. Right? Now, what happens in repo? We, I hope you all know it is a repurchase agreement wherein banks can avail liquidity from RBI by giving a collateral that is securities. Right? Now, repo generally increase. Kyun kara jata hai? Let's just discuss that as well. When RBI decides to increase its repo, it will further increase the cost of borrowing. It will increase the cost of borrowing and this will impact the liquidity in the economy. How liquidity might fall down, right? So the cost of borrowing increase hogi, it will be difficult for the households or for businesses to borrow from various banks, right? Because lending rate will increase when repo rate is more. Similarly, when repo rate is less, the RBI aims at injecting liquidity in the economy by a uh, how does it impact liquidity in the economy or proposes growth in the economy? Why? Because the cost of borrowing in this case will decrease. So the cost of borrowing decreases and there will be more credit and more growth. Okay. Now, the Monetary Policy Committee, which met on 3rd, 5th and 6th April, gave uh, the Monetary Policy Statement on 6th April and the repo rate remains unchanged at 6.5%. The SDF, which is the flow rate, is 6.25% and the MSF stands, which is the ceiling rate, it stands at 6.75%, right? Okay, now the decisions are in line with the, you know, the framework that is the objective of RBI or the Monetary Policy Committee. So the objective is to target inflation or to achieve a medium term target for CPI. Now, what is this medium term target? 4 plus minus 2 percent, right? He initially 2016 may decide who tha for 5 years, but later on it was, you know, uh, kept the same. Ye pura target, that is the medium term target of 4 plus minus 2 percent, initially decided in 2016, but was continued after the 5 years as well. Now, as per the second advance estimate, the GDP, the gross domestic product, is expected to be 7 percent in 2022-23, right? Uh, the GDP is expected to be 7% and what is the inflation? Inflation in the month of December was seven point was 5.7% and in the month of February it was 6.4%. I've already discussed this. Now, on the back of higher inflation in cereals, now the reason for higher inflation was cereals, milk and fruits and slower deflation in vegetable prices, which means there has been deflation in the vegetable prices, but it is still more, right? There's still inflation. The deflation is very slow. Okay. Now, we just talked about the monetary policy statement. Because it has remained same. Right? So, the rates have remained same. Now, let's talk a little bit about the statement of developmental and regulatory policies. There are five 
topics that the RBI or the Monetary Policy Committee talked about in the statement of developmental and regulatory policies. So under this, the target of RBI or the MPC is that we have such things which the RBI will be working on in the next couple of months. So innovative things or things that will work towards the development of the banking sector or towards various regulatory provisions of the banking sector. Those are talked about in this statement, right? It is a forward-looking statement which tells what the RBI will be doing in the coming future, right? So the first one is about developing an onshore non-deliverable de uh, derivative market, right? So what is this non-deliverable derivative market or derivative contract? So the RBI is focusing towards developing this market. What is this market? Non-deliverable -deliver uh, derivative market. Non-deliverable derivative market. Wow, it's a tongue twister. Okay. So under this, first let's understand what is non-deliverable or derivative. Right? What is a NDDC? Non-deliverable derivative contracts. So what happened in 2020 was that various banks or institutes which were operating in IFSC. IFSC, we Abhi ek do lecture pehle hi samjha hai about everything about IFSC. So banks that are operating in IFSC, which is IFSC Banking Unit, inko bola jata hai IFSC Banking Units or IBU, IFSC Banking Units. So banks which have branches in the IFSC or have operations in the IFSC sector, that is the Special Economic Zone. I hope aap sab logo ko pata hoga what is IFSC. It's a Special Economic Zone working in the gift city in Gujarat, Gandhi Nagar, right? So the banks which have operations in the IFSC, those are known as IFSC banking units, they were authorized, they were permitted to transact in INR, that is rupee denominated, non-deliverable foreign exchange derivative contracts. Now what is this non-deliverable foreign exchange derivative contracts? Let's break this and understand. Non-deliverable means a derivative contract mein jab jo underlying asset hota hai, uski delivery nahi hoti. What is a derivative contract? A derivative contract in layman terms is where an underlying asset is there and a contract is made to exchange this underlying asset in a future date. Right? This is what happens in a future or forward contract. Mein kya hota hai? That in a future date, this is the expectation of price of this uh, underlying asset. For example, gold. In this case, this will be rupee or foreign exchange. Right? Because it's a foreign exchange derivative. Hai hai, right? So, in future, we will exchange this foreign exchange. However, now this is a non-deliverable, which means the underlying asset will not be exchanged. Whatever the price will be on that spot rate, which we have contracted, only that price will be exchanged. So, for example, if somebody said the price will be 50 rupees, however, the price is 40 rupees. So, the person who charged at 40 rupees, or who lost hua hai, of this 10 rupees, they will just pay this 10 rupees. They will not pay the entire 40 rupees. Jo bhi difference hoga, 50 minus 40 ka jo difference hai, they will only pay this 10 rupees and the person who is in profit will receive this 10 rupees. So, the difference hai wo exchange ho gaya, pura jo currency hai, that is the underlying asset, this 40 rupees is not exchanged, right? Only the difference is exchange of the derivative contract. Ye samajhne ke aapko thoda derivative contract samajhna padega, which I hope aap sab logo in static section mein pada hua hoga. So under a non-deliverable, it means that the underlying asset is not delivered. In this case, the underlying asset is the foreign exchange. So foreign exchange is not delivered. However, Indian rupees mein jo delivery of the difference amount is exchanged, right? Ex spot ma swap mechanism ki tarah ye work karta hai. It works just like a swap mechanism wherein a contract is there ki kuch time baad, for example, three years ke baad, we will pay you the dollar ka rate prevailing in the market. Let's suppose today it is 80 rupees per dollar and in future the expectation is 90 pe chala jayega. So, 85 pe contract per liya jata hai. And whatever the uh, rate of dollar at that particular point, the difference hoga of the contract 85 pe contract tawa hai. Now you will not pay the pura dollar 85 rupees. However, the only difference hai. Let's suppose the dollar is 83 at that time. So, jisko bhi ye 2 rupees, 2 rupees per dollar ke hesap se, the amount will be exchanged, right? Not the entire dollar ka amount, 83, right? Which means it is not deliverable. The contract or the swap agreement is not 
डिलीवरेबल आई होप आपको थोड़ा समझ आ रहा होगा राइट नाउ दिस वॉज ऑथराइज इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आई बी उसको आई बी उसको दे वर परमिटेड टू डील विथ एन डी डी सी इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी विथ नॉन रेजिडेंस विथ नॉन रेजिडेंस एंड ऑल्सो विथ ईच अदर सो दो पार्टी ईच अदर के साथ भी कर सकती थी एंड ऑल्सो विथ नॉन रेजिडेंट समी हुज नॉट रिजाइडिंग इन इंडिया हाउ एवर वॉन्ट्स टू हैव सच अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और वॉन्ट्स टू पार्टिसिपेट इन सच अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट नो आई वुड समी वॉन्ट टू पार्टिसिपेट इन सच अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हम डेरिवेटिव में क्यों पार्टिसिपेट करते हैं हेजिंग के लिए आर्बिट्रेशन हेजिंग ये सब आई होप आप सब लोगों ने स्टैटिक में पढ़ा होगा सो टू हैज योर इंटरेस्ट राइट टू हैज योर रिस्क सॉरी टू हैज योर रिस्क एंड स्पेक्यूलेशन भी इसमें इन्वॉल्व होती है राइट सो एनी नॉन रेजिडेंट हु वॉन्ट टू एक्सचेंज दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और पार्टिसिपेट इन सच कॉन्ट्रैक्ट नाउ आई बी यूज वर्क ऑथोराइज टू पार्टिसिपेट इन नॉन डिलीवरेबल आई एन आर विच मीन्स दे विल बी डिनोमिनेटेड इन द रूपी आई एन आर नॉन डिलीवरेबल फॉर एन एक्सचेंज डेरिवेटिव कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में they could deal that was allowed in 2022 now in this monetary policy statement or the statement of developmental and regulatory policies mein kya decide hua hai that they will be allowed to do permit banks with ibus to offer inr to resident users also in their onshore market what does this mean their onshore market which means the market that is existing in their currency or in their country in their local country so for india what is the onshore market the foreign exchange market working in india theek hai to jo local market hai kisi bhi resident ki okay with a view to develop the onshore inr nddc and to provide residents ab ye residents ko bhi ye fayda dena chahti hai rbi to provide residents with the flexibility to efficiently design their hedging programs to participate in such inr denominated nddcs rbi decided to permit banks With IBB, IBUs, जिन बैंक्स के पास भी आई एफ एस सी बैंकिंग यूनिट है टू ऑफर आई एन आर एन डी डी सी टू रेजिडेंस यूजर्स इन देर ऑनशोर मार्केट विच मीन इन देर लोकल मार्केट राइट दीज बैंक विल हैव द फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी ऑफ सेटलिंग देयर एन डी डी सी ट्रांजेक्शन विद नॉन रेजिडेंट्स एंड विद ईच अदर इन फॉरन करेंसी और इन आई एन आर तो अब नॉन रेजिडेंट्स के साथ अगर सेटलमेंट हो रही है दैट कैन बी टेकन प्लेस इन फॉरन करेंसी और इन आई एन आर आई एन आर However, if they are dealing with the residents, that will be exchanged in INR. So, जो भी end of the period में जो भी difference pay करना होगा on this derivative contract, that will be paid in INR because it is rupee denominated. Okay, so residents को जो transactions होगी, that will be denominated or settled in the Indian rupee, mandatorily settled in rupees, right? With the residents. Now, अब इस पे और भी गाइडलाइंस आएंगी इन फ्यूचर वी विल अंडरस्टैंड दिस अगेन डू नॉट वरी अगर ये बहुत क्योंकि ज्यादा दिस यू नो डील्स विद द स्टॉक द फॉरन एक्सचेंज मार्केट थोड़ा सा समझने में प्रॉब्लम आ सकती है बट वील अंडरस्टैंड दिस इन डिटेल वंस फर्दर गाइडलाइंस आर ब्रॉट आउट बाय द आर बी आई नाउ दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एन डी डी सी और डेरेवेटिव कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दट इज द फॉरवर्ड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ओके द सेकेंड थिंग दैट आर बी आई इज गोइंग टू वर्क ऑन इज the efficiency in regulatory processes ab kaun se regulatory processes now what happens is banks they have to get licenses for various things from rbi to so, rbi se licenses lene padte hain authorization leni padti hai to carry out to carry out certain activities right so for example kisi ucbs ko uh, ya small finance bank ko kisi cheez ka license lena hai and a bank which wants to be a small finance bank they have to get obtained license or authorizations to carry out other activities now this our authorization is taken from the rbi right now rbi is enhancing the process of authorization right streamline karna chahta hai efficiency lana chahta hai in the process of authorization or in the process of obtaining licenses right for various entities so that there can be ease in the process of obtaining licenses now for that union budget mein decide hua tha ki ek portal banega a portal centralized portal so it was decided in the union budget 23 24 that a centralized portal will be formed now this portal is ki full form yaad rakhiyega prava portal for regulatory application validation and authorization i hope aapko samajh aa raha hoga authorization h is taken from here that's why it is in capital so platform for regulatory application validation and authorization it is prava okay which will gradually extend to all types of applications made by rbi across the functions now 
Let's read it again. Currently, the application and approval process for the same takes place in varied online and offline modes. किसी का भी एक स्ट्रीम लाइन प्रोसेस नहीं है एक सिंगल पोर्टल नहीं है जहां पे आप सारे लाइसेंसेस ले सकते हैं ऑलरेडी आरबीआई हैज गिवन द फैसिलिटी ऑफ ऑन टैप लाइसेंसिंग फॉर फॉर वेरियस अदर थिंग्स राइट ऑन टैप लाइसेंसिंग मींस और ऑन टैप फैसिलिटी ऑफ लाइसेंसिंग मींस वेन एवर यू वॉन्ट टू तो आरबीआई कोई विंडो ओपन नहीं करेगा ऑफ वन मंथ और टू मंथ एनी टाइम यू वॉन्ट टू गेट अ लाइसेंस यू कैन अप्लाई टू आरबीआई राइट सो दिस इज ऑन टैप फैसिलिटी ऑफ लाइसेंसिंग सो दैट वॉज वन स्ट्रीम लाइनिंग दट आरबीआई डेट नाउ आरबीआई वॉन्ट्स टू स्ट्रीम or bring the efficient bring efficiency in licensing and authorization for various activities now budget mein ye announcement hui thi to streamline the process of licensing a portal will be made a central portal now to reduce cost ease simplify thus that was the purpose of this portal or the purpose mentioned in the union budget right so it was announced that there is a need to simplify ease and reduce cost of compliance by financial sector regulators within the laid down time limits decided to applicants under various regulations right ab is process mein bahut uh, this portal mein is portal mein bahut sare processes streamline ho jayenge cost reduce hogi efficiency increase hogi timelines will be given for various processes right okay so the process will be simplified as well as timelines will be given for various uh, processes that are done okay Now the third one is about centralized web portal. एक ये भी portal है ये भी portal है This one is for licensing. Let's see ये portal किस लिए बनाया जा रहा है Now very interesting to know there is a fund called Depositors Depositor Education and Awareness Fund. ऐसा ही एक fund सेबी का भी है Investor Education and Protection Fund. Similarly there is a fund called Depositor Education and Awareness Fund. Now, इस फंड का पर्पस हमको नाम से ही समझ आ रहा है पर्पस ऑफ दिस फंड इज टू क्रिएट अवेयरनेस अमंग वेरियस डिपोजिटर्स वॉट आर दीज डिपोजिटर्स हु आर दीज डिपोजिटर्स एनी बडी हु हैज अ डिपोजिट अकाउंट इन अ बैंक चाहे सेविंग्स अकाउंट हो एफ डी हो करंट अकाउंट हो राइट योर डिपोजिटिंग योर मनी इन अ बैंक दैट मेक्स यूर डिपोजिटर नाउ द फंक्शन ऑफ दिस फंड इज टू गिव मनी फॉर अवेयरनेस एंड प्रोटेक्शन एंड एजुकेशन ऑफ डिपोजिटर्स अब इस फंड में पैसा कहां से आएगा सो इफ एनी डिपोजिट is uh, you know unclaimed or not used for 10 years so if any deposit in any bank account is not claimed or not utilized by the depositor for 10 years it will be transferred to the deas abhi deas kiske under aata hai this is maintained by the rbi so the deposits that remain unclaimed for 10 years ab aap soch rahe honge aisa kaise ho sakta hai so sometimes what happens is uh, the person they you know want to uh, you know close their account savings account but they do not intimate it to bank or let's say there is minimum balance and on that you are receiving interest you are receiving interest on that minimum balance however you do not pay any attention because you assume that there is no interest that is received right ya number change kar liya to aapko information nahi mil rahi hai okay um और एनी अदर टाइम एफ डी अगर आपको रिडीम करनी है बट यू आर नॉट गिविंग इंटीमेशन टू द बैंक फॉर यू नो अवेलिंग दिस रिडेमशन वैल्यू ऑफ एफ डी राइट सो इन सर्टन केसेस दीज अमाउंट रिमेन अनक्लेम्ड बाय द डिपोजिटर बट इफ इट हैपन्स फॉर टेन ईयर्स अगर दस साल तक यू नो यू नॉट यूजिंग दैट अमाउंट और देर इज नो हैपनिंग टेकिंग प्लेस फ्रॉम दैट अकाउंट एंड देर इज डिपोजिट इन दैट अकाउंट दैट विल बी ट्रांसफर्ड इन टू डीईएफ बाई दी आर बी आई फॉर द डी एफ को एजुकेशन एंड अवेयरनेस के लिए यूज करा जाएगा नाउ आर बी आई हैज टेकन वेरियस मेजर्स टू इंश्योर दैट न्यूअर डिपोजिट डू नॉट टर्न इन टू अनक्लेम सो आरबीआई वॉन्ट्स की बहुत सारे डिपोजिट ऑलरेडी अनक्लेम होते हैं एज ऑफ फेबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री देर आर मोर देन थर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड करोर डिपोजिट इन दिस फंड there are more than 35000 crore deposits in this fund so rbi does not want ki any uh, you know any de deposit newer deposits should not remain unclaimed or there should be intimation given to the depositor ki aapke account mein paisa hai please come and take it so intimation should be given and these deposits should be returned to their rightful owners right so rbi is already working towards that now rbi is further wants to develop a centralized web portal ab isme ek aur फंक्शन है द फीचर है इफ यू नो एनी सच थिंग हैपेंस दैट एनी डिपॉजिट अमाउंट रिमेन्स अनक्लेम फॉर टेन इयर्स बैंक्स आर सपोज टू प्रोवाइड इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन देयर वेबसाइट अब एक डिपॉजिटर को कैसे पता चलेगा दैट देयर अमाउंट इज अनक्लेम्ड और दे स्टिल हैव एन अकाउंट जिस पे इंटरेस्ट आ रहा है सो 
banks have to display a list of unclaimed deposits on their websites for information to these depositors that is one feature now to improve this and to widen the access of depositors and beneficiaries to such data taki unko ye data easily mil jaye rbi is creating a centralized web portal naam se hi samajh aa raha hai there will be a web portal wherein multiple banks ka data a depositor can find out right so for example if you have a bank account or a deposit in various banks you can find about all of these unclaimed deposits through this centralized web portal so in order to improve and widen the access of depositors beneficiaries to such data taki unko data easily mil jaye rbi has decided to develop a web portal to enable search across multiple banks for possible unclaimed deposits based on user inputs the search results will be enhanced by use of certain ai tools now a little information on this deaf deaf scheme was established by rbi in 2014 for the promotion of depositors interest and for any other related purposes deemed necessary by the RBI mostly it was to work towards depositors interest depositors education and awareness right the credit balance of any deposit account that is maintained with the banks and has not been operated for 10 years or even more now this amount will be transferred to deaf any amount remain unclaimed for 10 years or more now these are certain accounts if you are maintaining any such account ye sab included hote hain in this daf right so if there is any unclaimed amount in this d uh, yes in your bank account in any deposit account for example a current account hai aapke paas and you are not claiming that amount this will be transferred in the daf now the third one is about a central a grievance redressal mechanism already a grievance redressal mechanism is there that is the ombudsman scheme or the ombudsman mechanism इसमें CIC को भी इंक्लूड करा गया था वेरी रिसेंटली इफ यू रिमेंबर सो एक इंटीग्रेटेड ऑम्बुजमन स्कीम आई थी आरबीआई की इंटीग्रेटेड ऑम्बुजमन स्कीम विच वॉज सपोज टू बी वर्किंग आफ्टर 2022 ट्वेंटी ऑपरेशनल हुई थी इन 2022 ट्वेंटी टू इंटीग्रेटेड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू में ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन में थी शायद यस सो अंडर दिस अंडर दिस ऑम्बुजमन स्कीम सी आई सीज वॉट अंडर दिस इंटीग्रेटेड ऑम्बुजमन स्कीम्स अलॉन्ग विद ट्रांजेक्शन एंड बैंकिंग ट्रांजेक्शन PICs were also included in the integrated ombudsman scheme. Ab what are these PICs credit information companies? Naam se hi pata lag raha hai. It is a third party or it is a company which is obtaining financial data related to credit or related to loans of any individual, right? So if anybody wants to have a loan from any bank account, but you have already taken a loan from two other, you know, banks. how will this bank come to know through cic's credit information companies so they give out information on any individual about their credit history or their payments or any loans that are already there right so there are a lot of complaints that come up to rbi or this integrated ombudsman scheme that are related to credit history of a person it may be revised and not reflected ya kisi ki credit history assess ho gayi but the person is not you know not aware of this assessment or there might be a correction in the credit history koi payment aapne kar di hai but this credit history is not reflecting that right so a lot of complaints were received by this ombudsman scheme for that rbi has already enhanced the the uh, grievance redressal mechanism very recently rbi came up with integrated ombudsman हर CIC को एक इंटीग्रेटेड ऑम्बुजमिन अपने इंटरनल ऑम्बुजमिन सॉरी दिस इज नॉट आई ओ इज नॉट इंटीग्रेटेड ऑम्बुजमिन इट इज इंटरनल ऑम्बुजमिन इंटरनल ऑम्बुजमिन वॉज सपोज टू बी देयर इन एवरी सी आई सी क्रेडिट इंफॉर्मेशन कंपनी विच विल बी वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स ग्रीवियंस रिड्रेसल मैकेजम राइट नाउ आर बी आई इज वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स इन्हांसमेंट ऑफ इंटीग्रेटेड ऑम्बुजमिन एंड ऑल्सो दिस इंटरनल ऑम्बुजमिन सो विद इंक्रीज इन कस्टमर कंप्लेन ये हमने समझ लिया रिगार्डिंग सी आई सीज और credit information reporting or functioning of cics now it has been decided to put in place a comprehensive framework for strengthening and improving the efficacy is entire you know system or this entire mechanism of grievance redressal should be streamlined should be more efficient the rbi is now functioning of uh, on that and a comprehensive framework is br uh, brought out by rbi after this ab isme kya hoga kuch steps that rbi is going to take up the first one is a compensation mechanism add on kara gaya hai so there is a provision of compensation 
what is this that you know if any person who is you know uh, no, whose grievance is not redressed for a certain period of time they will be now compensated so compensated for delayed updation or rectification of credit information if you have given any complaint uske liye bhi aapko compensation milegi right so compensation provision the next is sms or email alert to customers when their credit information are accessed from their cics right so if i am a bank and i am accessing any information from any credit information company now the person about whom the information is there there is a provision ki unko sms ke through ya email ke through they will be alerted the customer will be alerted now a time frame for ingestion of data if there is any data that the customer wants to give up or there is any correction in the data a time frame is given a time frame given hai ki within suppose so and so days now this these guidelines will come in future abhi tak only these provisions are added in this comprehensive framework of grievance redress to receive now time frame for ingestion of data received by cics from credit institution agar kisi credit institution ne cics ko koi information di hui hai now when the time frame of ingestion of data which means when are they updating their data us pe bhi ek time frame diya jayega going forward and disclosures relating to the number and nature of customer complaints now cics will have to disclose the complaints that they have received the number of complaints the number of complaints resolved by these cics they have to tell about that on their website okay now this is the definition of cic okay the last one is about upi we all know the importance of upi hum bahut time se padhte aa rahe hain npci has worked amazingly especially when it comes to upi unified payment interface now this around 75% of the digital transactions today that are either p2p ya p2m 75% of them are बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट डेटा है मैं खुद इस डेटा को पांच बार आप लोगों से डिस्कस कर चुकी हूँ सो इफ इट कम्स इन योर एग्जामिनेशन स्पेशली फेज टू में इफ देर इज एनी डिस्क्रिप्टिव आंसर राइटिंग दैट यू हैव टू गिव यू शुड गिव दिस डेटा बहुत अच्छे मार्क्स मिलेंगे आपको बिकॉज आरबीआई इट सेल्फ हेज टॉक्ड अबाउट दिस डेटा ट्वाइस ऑफ थ्राइस राइट सो यूपीआई हैज रॉबर्स पेमेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन सपोर्टिंग सिस्टम एंड एन आर ऑफ फीचर्स प्रेजेंटली इट हैंडल सेवेंटी ऑफ द रिटेल डिजिटल payment volumes in india the upi system has been leveraged to develop products and features aligned to india's payment digital goals theek hai general information now what are we talking about in this uh, monetary policy committee statement ya yeah, statement on developmental and regulatory policies isme kya baat hui hai about upi okay so now we all know abhi tak hum upi payment kaise karte the either through our debit uh, you know either through our account that we have debit card ke through और वॉलेट में जो हमने पैसा करा राइट वेरी रिसेंटली क्रेडिट कार्ड्स के थ्रू भी ये इजी हो गया था सो पेटीएम आल्सो वेरी रिसेंटली अलाउड दैट अ कस्टमर कैन यू नो मेक यूपीआई ट्रांजैक्शंस और यस मेक यूपीआई ट्रांजैक्शंस थ्रू देयर क्रेडिट कार्ड सो इट वाज नाउ आल्सो अवेलेबल टू थ्रू क्रेडिट कार्ड्स स्पेशली रुपे क्रेडिट कार्ड्स रिसेंटली रुपे क्रेडिट कार्ड्स were permitted to be linked to UPI at present UPI transactions are enabled between either deposit at banks or prepaid payment instruments that is wallet to abhi tak aap ppis ya wallet se payment karte the bank jo aapka deposit account hai very recently credit card ke through bhi rupee credit card ke through bhi upi platform pe agar aap exchange kar rahe ho that was permitted right now what is proposed in this statement is that now upi transactions can take place on a credit mechanism so the scope of upi is enhanced and now transfer from a pre sanctioned credit lines at banks will be possible so for example if you have especially when it comes to deposit account so if you have a certain amount of deposits in your bank account and let's suppose you want to make a credit transaction ya overdraft pe jana hai aapko and you want to make payment of more than the amount that you have in your account it will just work like you know on the lines of credit card however there is no involvement of credit card so even if you don't have a credit card you only have a deposit account you can make payment even if you don't have the amount because now pre sanctioned credit lines at banks pre sanctioned credit lines ke pay aapko payment uh, kar sakte ho using upi so for example if i have only 20000 in my bank account but i want to use 30000 for making any payments through upi i can do that i can do that condition ये जो 10,000 की लिमिट है दिस शुड बी प्री सैंक्शन बाय द बैंक नाउ दिस कैन बी डन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ 
let's say my credit history or my repayment history am i able to repay the loans that i've taken earlier or kisi overdraft jo facility hai agar mere deposit account mein milti hai already am i being able to pay, repay back the overdraft amount that i have utilized right so these this amount should be pre sanction this limit should be pre sanction now pre sanction credit limit se aap you know you can make upi transaction right in addition to the deposit account in other words upi network will facilitate payment which are financed by credit from the bank so credit pe aap payment le sakte hain from the bank and you can make payments in upi now it is just working like a credit card however in this you are not using any credit card or ek aur cheez ho jayegi pos machines ki bhi ab zarurat nahi padegi because you are making payments through upi qr code pe aap P2P P2P या P2M transactions कर सकते हैं फ्रॉम वन अकाउंट टू अन अदर अकाउंट राइट सो पीओ ए पी ओ एस मशीन जिसपे आप कार्ड स्वाइप करते हैं उसकी भी जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी वाई बिकॉज एक तो क्रेडिट कार्ड पे भी अलाउड है रुपए क्रेडिट कार्ड पे यूपीआई ट्रांजेक्शन आर अलाउड राइट सो यू डू नॉट हैव टू कैरी योर क्रेडिट कार्ड एवरी टाइम एंड ऑल्सो क्रेडिट पे आप पैसा उठा सकते हो फ्रॉम द बैंक और दिस क्रेडिट अमाउंट इज अ प्री सैंक्शन अमाउंट एंड ऑन दैट यू कैन मेक पेमेंट राइट आई होप इतना समझ आ गया होगा This was the last, you know, topic discussed by this monetary policy committee. So, five things a monetary policy committee is going to work towards in the coming few months. Okay. I hope you have understood all this. Please, once again, please once again revise it. 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 Now the repo rate on SDF after the MPS, that is the monetary policy statement, stands at dash and dash respectively. Please answer in the comment section below. अभी हमने पढ़ा है. This is very important. अगर आपका RBI exam कभी भी in next two months if it comes out, this question is very important for phase one. Similarly, IFSC exam है या SEBI exam है और any other exam जहाँ पे finance current affairs पूछे जाएंगे, this exam will definitely, this question will definitely come. Okay. Second, which of the following statement is are correct about the recently released monetary policy statement? You have to find out the correct statement. The SDF, that is the standing deposit facility, remains unchanged at six point two five. Now here you have to understand it is also talking about unchanged and the rate six point two five. The second advance estimates released by NSO on February twenty eight date be given has placed its real GDP growth at seven percent for this entire year. this is also correct now core inflation remained elevated and was above 6% in january and february the statement is also correct from jan in january february jiske basis pe ye april ki report aayi hai because that is the data that we have until now january and february ka right so yes march ka data will be released in april second week or the third week inflation data right so right now we have january and february ka inflation data on the basis of which this monetary policy committee has taken its statement okay What does P stands for in recently proposed central portal named Prava? बहुत important है, definitely आ सकता है किसी भी exam में, especially phase one में तो आ सकता है. In phase two, they can ask you what is the function of Prava, what it will work towards, right? What are the various licenses that are given by banks? ठीक है? So the correct answer here will be platform. Which of the following statement is are incorrect? About Deposit Education and Awareness Fund (DEAF) Deposit Education Awareness Fund, it is maintained by SEBI. No RBI. Any deposit remains unclaimed for seven years. It is actually ten years. In a bank, a transfer to the DEAF. Deposits unclaimed under fixed deposits are not included in the DEAF. All the statements here are incorrect. Okay. Now this was the last question for the day. I hope you have understood this. Monetary policy sessions, monetary policy statement is very important for your exams. So please statement ko achhe se padiyega. Go through this session again if you if there's anything that you have missed. Otherwise also, jo bhi chizhe aayi hai, we are we gonna discuss it again once the final guidelines of RBI come out. Right? Thank you.